I recently asked on the channel's community page, what's your favorite movie decade? Huh. The 90s. So in this video, I've challenged myself to create an epic poster for the king of 90s sci-fi action movies, Jurassic Park. I was only six years old when this hit the theaters, so I didn't see it until it came out on VHS. And there's one scene that always stood out to me, and that's the inspiration for this alternative poster. Oh my God. Go. So to begin with, we're going to be working with every Photoshop artist's worst nightmare, a shrubbery. A what? Trees. They've got to be up there as one of the harder things to cut out, and I'll be utilizing various techniques to do this. For some, if I'm lucky, I can simply use the Select Subject button. Others, I'll use the Object Selection tool. My favorite method, however, is done using the channels. When separating trees from simpler backgrounds, this is a great way to do it. And then you've got monstrosities like this image. If I'm desperate, I might use the Magneto Lasso tool to make some selections and clean it up with a textured brush. So I've got a bunch of tree assets cut out and ready to go. We're going to use these to build a tree just how we want it. We've got a large tree which will act as our base image. And I really like how the light filters through the trees in this one. So we'll use this as our background. Let's just erase those edges and make a few lighting adjustments. Okay, next, let's create a little bit of separation between the tree and the background. Select a nice misty blue, and we'll paint that in. Got some nice chunky vines here, just gonna give the tree a bit more character, something like that. Fix that lighting, and I think we'll drop in this image too, just to keep building up that detail. Some simple color adjustments. Now, we need a bit more clarity and definition at the top of the image. These thick branches will do nicely. Just going to alter the colors and lighting so it blends with the rest of the tree. Then we'll add in those branches and leaves. And we're going to keep building up a few more just along the edge of the trunk. Paint in a little bit of that blue mist to give it some depth. And with a few more branches, we get something like this. I'll then give the image a bit more contrast and then paint in some more mist, which is going to help ramp up the atmosphere. Cool, we've got a solid foundation for our tree. Next up, we're going to do some Chop Shop, which might actually be a first for the channel. I've got this lovely 1992 Ford Explorer, and the goal is to turn it into one of those iconic Jurassic Park tour vehicles. So first, let's work on the paint job. A nice vibrant green to start with, then paint in some yellow at the base, some of those red dinosaur stripes, Lovely jubbly. Let's bring back the wheels and windows, paint those alloys, add a few accessories. And now we just need to make that roof. We'll make a selection, just move that into position, and then we'll just erase some of the edges to alter that shape. And I'll do the same thing, grabbing a bit of this window, stretch that, modify the shape a little bit, and simply paint in some highlights and shadows. Let's flip that, get the logo on there, and almost forgot, but we need that text on the tires. It's a small detail, but it really finishes the look. Yeah, nice. That was actually a lot more fun than I expected. Next, we're just gonna alter the overall lighting and colors to the car. Uh, hang on a sec. It's just occurred to me that... So that was a waste of time. Yep, that's more like it. Let's use the lasso tool to create some headlights, a little bit of blur, set the blending mode to overlay. Then we'll take this light rays image, distort that, move that into position and set the blending mode to linear dodge. I'll then use a color fill layer set to screen to paint in some light bloom. Now we'll create a red color fill layer, and this is going to act as that brake light on the back of the vehicle. Just going to use a soft round brush and paint that in. Right, time to get some characters in there. We're going to start with Tim, and first we'll find a suitable place for him. I've got this image of a boy climbing a tree, reducing the colors, swapping out the hair, creating some highlights and shadows. Just need to make sure he's not clinging on to thin air once I'm finished. For Dr. Grant, this image of a guy during boot camp should do the trick. We need to create that denim shirt, so we'll make some selections from this image. And we'll warp that into place, adjust the brightness and contrast. And we'll grab some sleeves too. and just painting in his iconic red handkerchief. Okay, cool. I think for a bit of variation and texture, we could include the enclosure wall that they fall down. Not technically correct, but again, it's just a design choice. A little bit more foliage. 
and then just some final tweaks to round things up. This one went pretty smoothly overall, creating that Jurassic Park vehicle was definitely a highlight, it was pretty satisfying seeing that come together, and I've added a rain overlay which I think helps tie the image together nicely. If you want to try creating your own movie poster, be sure to check out my fantasy movie poster course. Learn how to design a cinematic poster using essential Photoshop tools and techniques. Use the coupon code SPRING24 at checkout to receive 15% off this course and all the other Photoshop courses in my store. Next up, we're going to create an alternative poster for the upcoming movie. So my inspiration for this piece will be these epic posters for The Dark Knight Rises and Star Trek Into Darkness. We've got a nice gentle start to this one, we're going to create a simple beach scene with a few mountains in the background. I've got some mountains here, just going to use a selective colour adjustment layer to introduce some blues, erase the sky, and soften up that transition by painting in a little bit of light haze. This will do nicely for our layer of sand, just erase the top section. And I think I'll move those mountains over a little bit and just stretch this to meet the edge. Okay, cool. Now here's where we'll start to get the concept for this poster in place. Basically, I'm going to try and make the brighter, more empty portions of the poster form the shape of Proxima Caesar's crown. To do that, I've laid down this crown template and based on imagery from the trailers, they seem to have made a huge rusted old ship one of their homes. And this is what I'll be using to create that negative space. This is definitely going to be tricky to make it look half decent, but we'll give it a go. I've got a bunch of shapes and textures from rusted old ships and we're just going to start maneuvering those into position. I've lowered the opacity of that crown template layer so I can still see it, I just need to keep an eye on it so I'm filling in the right spaces. Let's fill in the left side, just going to use the warp tool to get that into position. And we'll erase this section here so our crown shape is still visible. Grab this bit for the centerpiece, something like that. A few more bits for the foreground and then we'll just darken it up so that shape becomes nice and obvious. Okay, we need a ground layer so this section from this factory will work nicely for the floor. Just going to darken that up and then create a few highlights. Cool. And in Vato Elements, 3D assets come in really handy here. Along the beach, we're just going to create a kind of graveyard for old forgotten boats and ships. The rustier the better. Put that one here and then maybe one more just in the background. Now I'm just going to create some simple wooden structures to form a path from the boat onto the beach. Distort those and duplicate to the other side. And we'll grab these ones too just so we've got a bit of variation. Then a few more taller ones which we can hang some flags from. I've got some flag stock assets, so I'm going to make those selections and then get them into position. That'll do. And I'll use a color fill layer set to linear dodge to paint in some more intense light. Next up, it's time for our main character, Proxima Caesar. We've got this model and I've given him a staff. Now we just need to build up the detail. We've got this shot from the trailer which will drop in and then blend with the model. And we'll do the same thing for the arms, so we've got some texture and hair going on. Then grab this section of clothing, darken that up, and the same thing for his main armour. And now I'll just use various texture and hair brushes to paint in some detail where it needs it. Adding a shadow so he feels planted to the floor. Now we'll drop in any final additions and do the final tweaks needed to make sure the whole image feels cohesive and blends together. I think the 
the overall look for this one is okay. Of course, it's a concept idea we've seen many times before, so maybe it lacks originality, but we knew that going into it. I did feel like it was missing something, so I've added a crowd of apes just to fill up some of that empty space. If you want to see what an alternative poster for the classic movie Jaws looks like, be sure to watch this video right here.